All right, guys, welcome back to Stuck on an Island. We're stuck with you guys, and we're always smiling. Yeah, I've been seeing some comments, a few comments. Person been asking me like, "Yo, when are you gonna go cooking by the river? Or where is your kayak? We want to see those kayak adventures. Those are gonna definitely happen. I've said it in my head, said it in my mind. Are those two different things, or are they the same? I think they're the same thing. Anyway, that middle of the next month which is going to be september i'm going to be starting back with the whole kayak adventures outdoor cooking type of vibe yo it's going to be really epic the way how i'm envisioning it and how i'm going to do it is going to be really crazy i had a couple stuff that i had to do for those who haven't seen my other channel which is called soy you can find it once you go into the channel link for this channel here you'll see soy i've been doing a bunch of stuff for example i've been i've, I've moved into a new apartment i've had to relocate my dogs, a whole heap of crazy stuff that's been happening in my life. So right now I'm just taking it easy. So instead of giving you guys no content, I'm giving you guys something. Um, today's video, I'm gonna be actually be working on a venomous fish. Um, we've caught this fish before on a video, but I never got the chance to cook it or I've never had the chance to eat it. And people have been asking me, what does lionfish taste like? So in today's video, I'm gonna actually have the chance to prepare it for the very first time. Now, a cool thing about cooking at home as well, it gives me a chance to experiment on recipes that I will be trying on my outdoor cooking. So look at this away as being in the back door of you know how i actually come up with the recipes that i intend to cook um actually i have my subscriber over there on a video call right now and he was walking me through how to prepare fried bamis i think i did it one time before but i remember hearing some of the older folks saying um, when you're doing fried bamis you have to soak it in coconut milk and then you fry it so all right kurt how do we do the whole bami thing all right so you gotta soak it in coconut milk for about a half an hour mm -hmm. And then, if you want it to be crispy on the outside and soft in the middle, yeah, you can fry it. Well, first of all, burn some scotch bonnet in the oil so you get a better flavor. And then when you're frying it, as soon as you put it in, you cover it. Yeah. And that'll allow the steam to cook the inside and outside still be crispy. All right. So cool. That's a great way for me to get tips. For me, as a person who cooks, I've worked in the restaurant industry before, I am never afraid to get some tips from people because there are different ways that people cook and I am very interested in trying the different ways. So I'm gonna try Kurt's method today, Big Up Yourself K-Star, and let's get to soaking some bami and frying some fish. All right guys, so I know some of you are curious as to what brand I might be using. This is the Western bami. It's never used it before, but I said never quite done bami, but it seems to be a very basic concept. Um, what bamis are made of, primarily cassava, you know, so. Bami is one of the favorite things for me to have, especially when I go to like um, Hellshire or whatever the case is. Really good. So, uh, Kurt just mentioned to me just now, it's best to cut these in four because you want to have more surface area for the milk to actually soak through, which makes sense. So I'm gonna do that. Typically people cut the, have the Bami's cut up in, in quarters. I mean, it's a little bit more bite size. So I'm gonna do it that way. Cut it in four. And of course we have some coconut milk here. This is packaged coconut milk. It makes life a lot easier, but if you want to go really authentic Jamaican, then you can definitely grate some coconuts, <laughs> blend it and squeeze like. But yeah, for me, this is my breakfast today, actually. I haven't had anything all day, so it's going to be quite easy and convenient. So I'm just going to drop these in there. Um, I think Kurt mentioned that it's about half an hour to soak these. Um... <laughs> That's quite long, but I think it all depends on how how thick the coke the, the bamis are because you have some bamis that are really thick. This one is about I would say it's about quarter way thick, so it's not that thick. Yeah, about half inch thick. So I'm gonna leave these in here for uh, let's say about 50 minutes, but I'm gonna check them just to make sure that they are not like disintegrating or anything like that. Okay, so here comes the fish that is the talk of the town you know so i got these fish fresh pots they were delivered to my home everything like that which i thought was really boss it was really cool that i got it that way and everything was cleaned out so um the little bit that i know about these venomous fish of course they're called lionfish and they're very they're very much an invasive species what that means is that they will come into your your coral reefs in your country and they basically just will just eat everything up with I don't, i'm not even sure drop in the comments if they eat other fish or they just eat up all the food that the other fish need to eat but i'm thinking that they're eating the other fish or whatever so anyway um they actually come into our waters and actually dominate 
you know, so they breed up very quickly and they're going to just eat down the place, which is quite crazy. Now, the perfect part about this that I heard about these fish is that they taste really delicious. So that way, you know, you can go out there, catch some lionfish or whatever, and you can actually enjoy eating the bastards. <laughs> oh, Kurt, did you hear that, bro? Anyway, um, I do not know the, the best way to cook a lionfish, if it's actually to fry, to steam or whatever, but what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to fry this and then after I'm done frying it, I'm going to wipe it down with a nice little um, garlic confit, right, call it garlic butter basically, and I'm going to see how that works out. But the first thing I'm going to do is to clean the fish. Alright, so we have some water in there and of course I'm just going to add a little bit of vinegar, cut away some of the... Is that all? Well, luckily, because I'm a Jamaican, like, I literally have two gallons of vinegar. Like, Jamaican people, they don't know what things that are already. We love make sure so we meet them well clean. Like, I'm not even joking. If you thought I was messing around, here we go. <laughs> These are my two gallons of vinegar. Yeah, I definitely do not mess around when it comes down to cleaning my meat. It's very important for me. Now, um, what makes this fish venomous? I forgot to mention that part. It's the spines. The spines are not there, which I'm happy about. But they say if you get stuck by one of the the spines then yeah you're gonna be in tremendous pain i did speak to my virgin uh spearfish in jamaica go check out his channel he got stuck by a couple times and he said that it's very painful but for him i guess over time he's gotten a little bit accustomed to it so it's not so bad so i'm happy that this is perfectly fine there's no spines on it at all and if you've ever cleaned fish before and you've gotten stuck by it you will know that hurts like a bastard i'm talking just regular fish regular fish fins stuck me before it's very painful i remember somewhere it stuck me under here and i'm telling you man it swelled up for days and that was just a regular fish wow <laughs> all right so because i am going to be frying these i'm going to get them dry as much as possible i mean the less water the less popping that you're going to have and the more your seasoning is going to adhere to the meat so all right so typically how i used to see back in the day you know my parents making fish is always just normally typically just salt and black pepper and that's it but i was actually working on a, a jerk chicken video the other day but it was emancipation day and people were playing music around the pool or whatever so i had some jerk seasoning that i had sectioned out so i'm just gonna add that you know there's one thing about cooking, like never be afraid to experiment on stuff. Just try new things, yo. Don't care what people want to say about it. So I'm going to add some jerk seasoning. This is just a powdered version. I'm going to see how this is going to turn out on this fish. Can you guys feel the fear that I have? Because like I'm literally still afraid. Like what if there is one spine still there with the active bio ingredient? <laughs> yo. This is one scary fish kind of ugly too. So I don't know if you guys can see, this is kind of the hazing point, you see the smoke coming up. It's a little bit hot, so I dropped my heat back down to low, but I'm gonna drop some pimento or allspice and a whole scotch bonnet pepper in there. All right, so here we have the bamis. They seem to have soaked pretty well, so. Yeah, so what I'm doing is just do a quick test fry. Yeah, I know you guys probably couldn't hear me so well back then. So I'm doing a quick test fry on the first four pieces. I'm going to test it out using K-Star's way. And then if it doesn't work out or if it works out well, I'll keep doing that. But if it doesn't, I will try it the regular frying way that you don't put the lid over it. And I'll see which one gives me a better fry. Also, the one that's still soaking in the coconut milk, I will see if, if it soaks longer, if it works out better or not. Yeah, for those of you guys who are dying to see Jamaica, yes, it's a beautiful day outside. You can see the Ponciana trees somewhere up there, sunny. God bless Jamaica. I just heard my friend just now. He was like, mm, mm, mm. he just heard the frying. <laughs> he probably can smell it from here. All right, whoa, that steamed up. Okay, so with this technique, I do see some puffing from the bamis. It does look 
does look kind of interesting looking. Huh. You don't really need to flip them because they're being deep fried, but I'm very interested to see how this turns out to be honest. I can take this out for now because it's burning. So over here, I'm just doing heating up the oil for the fish, but yo, let me tell you, I can smell the coconut milk from these bammies. Oh my gosh. Smells so good. I just have to make sure that the inside is cooked properly. Um, a little tip whenever you're taking anything out of the fridge, allow it to get to room temperature because what you don't want to happen, you don't want inside to be very cold. So when the outside looks done, the inside isn't done. All right, so our oil is already seasoned, so we can drop. I do not like hot oil. you guys can hear me so well because there's a lot of popping going on but yo let me tell you this bami with this type of frying technique it's really crispy on the outside but look how soft and tender the inside is it's almost like having a steam fried bami Alright guys, so it's pretty hot inside my house and it's hot outside my house as well But I was like, yo, I'm gonna give you guys a quick peek of the fish and I'll tell you guys what I think about it So one thing I know is about lionfish, it's definitely a very fleshy fish Look at that, yo There is a lot of flesh on this fish Wow This is a pretty good fish, I actually enjoy this a lot Um almost tasting like a parrot fish kind of the consistency of it so uh, this could be a great replacement of us not really eating so much parrot fish so if you've never had lionfish before please go out there and try it hopefully a lot of these restaurants start catching them and actually putting them on the menus for a decent price so that we can all enjoy it pretty good so i do have a little garlic paste here just a little rough done garlic confit with some butter that we had melted up. So that's that. Let's see how that goes with garlic. <laughs> Let's try with a piece of this scotch bonnet pepper. I mean it's garnishing but I do like pepper. Mmm. Perfect combination. I actually enjoy that. Lionfish for me is a win. It's definitely a win. Okay, so this is the steam fried bami. Oh, so quick tip, guys. Do not soak that brand of bami too long because it does absorb the coconut milk really quick. It's like a steam fried bami. I think I'd have soaked this a little bit less. But it's definitely a vibe. It's cooked properly too. Now, I did redo these because... The water that I had soaking for a bit too long, it got messed up. Soak this for literally like a minute. Let's see how it comes out on the inside. And this works pretty well. I mean, just one minute and it's perfectly fine. So for that particular brand, I know you don't have to soak it for too long. Soak it for like a minute or two. 
So I'm happy with how the bam, bam is turned out, but let me tell you, the garlic butter on this fish with some of the scotch bonnet pepper here. Oh man, look at that. Mmm. This is not even a joke. Flying fish is actually really good. Look how fleshy this fish is, bro. Oh my god. Yo, let me tell you, if it was up to me, this fish would be a very endangered fish. Very endangered. And you guys know, notoriously, I'm not really a fan of fish, but if it's part fish or now lionfish, then definitely. Definitely. So this is going to be my new meal in replacement of the part. I wish I had cut up more pepper. If you guys like eating pepper, drop in the comments.